Stan Jibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Good Vibrations. A viewer recently pointed out uh, and in fact displayed a graph showing the sunspot cycle and that we are now at a minimum sunspot number period. And another viewer made a comment to the effect that he's heard evidence that we are approaching a second maunder minimum. M-A-U-N-D-E-R. Maunder minimum. Now that was during the, more or less during the second half of the 17th century. Astronomers with their telescopes noticed that sunspots rarely appeared at all for a period of 50 or 60 years, starting about 1645 and ending about or in the early 1700s. And for some reason, uh, pe some certain people are forecasting that we're going to get another maunder minimum, that, that the sunspot low that we're at now isn't going to resurge into a new cycle, but it's just going to stay down there. Now, to me, I have no idea how anybody could come to a conclusion like that for a forecast for sunspot numbers spanning centuries when they can't even tell whether or not it's going to snow tomorrow here in the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of adverse weather. I was going to, anomalous weather, uh, asymmetrical weather, just whatever. So that's not necessarily going to happen. I have no idea about that. But suppose it does. Uh, low sunspot cycle periods are not all bad for ham radio operation. If I'm not mistaken, nighttime conditions on the 160 meter band are actually at a peak during that kind of a, of a time frame. We might be in for a prolonged period of exceptional 160 meter activity if we are in, in store for a maunder minimum. And we have no idea there are new ham bands at lower frequencies and lower still. Now the human, human factor, the noise factor, uh, has nothing to do with the sunspot cycle and is in fact a very gloomy scenario. But uh, if we're to believe the, the news that we read in the rest of the media, almost overwhelmingly it leads people to believe or seems to be aimed at leading people to believe that there'll be a lot less humans on the planet in about 20 or 30 years anyway. And those of us who survive will have much quieter conditions in terms of human-made noise. Maybe we'll all go back to the caveman era, except we'll have lithium iron phosphate batteries and super sophisticated ham radio transceivers that will operate from a million meters to a millionth of a meter. And we'll have the whole spectrum to ourselves and there'll be no FCC to tell us where we can send and operate. We can all be pirates, caveman pirates, and live off nutritious, wild, and abundant food, provided we're all willing to be hermits, such as Agafia Lykova in Siberia, which I described or pointed to in another video. I'm ranting, yes, I'm ranting. But what else is new? And somebody said, somebody needs a KSS operation here. Keep Stan sane. To which I would reply, whoever said Stan was sane in the first place. But to be perfectly reasonable and honest, as far as I know, sunspot minima are not entirely bad news. There are good aspects to it. And there are other modes and ways that we can find and discover and perfect if there is indeed 
such a maunder minimum too. I guess we can call it the Gibalisco minimum. Not that I want it, but we don't have much control over anything these days, it seems. Especially the news media. But I'll refrain with great difficulty from spouting off about that. I've spouted out enough insanity already. Or how, or is it insane? You decide, you imagine, you dream good things for ham radio. Because really, we're awful lucky to have these privileges at all. Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, saying 73 and so long, which in my native fist will always translate into so long, da-da-da-da-da-da.